Hello, hello listeners, <clears throat> peace be unto you, uh, wherever you are listening to me from, uh, I greet you, 
today, uh, Saturday. Like I said in my last uh, talk, I said uh, I'm not going to be uh, captioning it because uh, like uh, a proverb in my place says that uh, since the dinta, the hunter <laughs> uh, keeps firing without stopping, uh, that uh, we lick the bed or uh, will always be flying around without patching. So uh, we, uh, my talks have been censored this time. Uh, we know that uh, <clears throat> Uh, we are in a precarious uh, situation. But having said that, I don't want to uh, talk much on that. I pray this time, calling on my father to be with us as I give out this message that you, uh, my listener, will be enriched with new facts and I shall be inspired more uh, to do this needful uh, as assigned uh, to me, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to talk about uh, trust and uh, making efforts uh, because uh, as I decided to uh, raise up this liberation gospel, <clears throat> having in mind the precarious situation we are in at the moment, uh, uh, our march and uh, our march towards the restoration of the uh, Republic of Biafra. I know there are a lot of uh, uh, people still thinking about the issue uh, on the wall, but there's uh, there's something I want to remind us uh, in this broadcast. And this is my talk. I said I want to talk about uh, trust, trusting in God while making efforts. You know. Mm. This is uh, something uh, many of us, uh, as a human being, uh, man is a religious uh, animal. Uh, you we always, and uh, coming from where I do come from, we trust in God, even though there are a few people who still trust in uh, things, uh, different things, but by and by we understand that the ultimate power resides in in heaven and uh, I've always asked I've always asked ourselves why do we trust God yet uh, we cannot uh, uh, I mean why do we think God is uh, omnipotent and he's strong he can do many things yet we can't trust some of the things that are important to us him because God loves challenges especially when you uh, put everything into his hands, making him to understand that without him, uh, nothing can be done. My people will always say, um, uh, You know what I'm talking about if you are Igbo, uh, Dibia being a native uh, doctor. We have always resorted to uh, uh, God when we are hopeless, and he's always a uh, uh, God of the hopeless. I decided to bring out a few facts uh, on the issue of trust. Then I have uh, some other points I want to make in uh, trusting in God while making uh, efforts. Uh, like I, I keep telling you, I believe in the Bible uh, in as much as a uh, few people might have issues with that, but I have asked them to look at the Bible, to read it uh, without reservation and to um, assimilate the things therein, not just going to church and dressing very well and listening to your pastor and going back. Because um, the same Bible told us that uh, our temple is the house of the Lord. Our body is the temple of the Lord. Uh, and as such, I keep uh, saying that many of our tra many of the aspects of our traditions are contained in the Bible. I've always said that uh, even the Ten Commandments, most of uh, our traditions, aspects of our traditions, still talk about the Ten Commandments in the Bible. So, if we look at this, if we just oppose or compare and contrast, 
uh, will see that we are pointing towards the same God. And the same God we, one way or the other, uh, have reverence to, want us to trust him in all we do, even while making uh, preparations. And uh, I brought out two key uh, aspects of the Bible in the Old Testament to buttress my point. First, I brought about the uh, case with Elijah. I have a... Uh, I want to discuss in this uh, edition just two points. First of all, trusting in God. Uh, two, making efforts on our own because um, the Biafrans, particularly the Igbos, are all across uh, the world. Uh, while it looks as if uh, many people will think about the issue of Biafra is all about the Igbos because somebody has to take leadership and uh, uh, the Igbos being... Uh, very uh, people of strong character, being children of God, having com self confidence, and making something out of nothing, will always uh, want to be successful. They have the drive, natural drive, to succeed, and as such. But uh, it, it, it's important to know that uh, sometimes uh, people that are intelligent often uh, tend to forget themselves. Uh, they lack the confidence, they might be hit by one or two things, even that's why they say examinations or uh, exams is not the best, uh, the test of true knowledge, sometimes you might be in a class, you don't take the first position or second position or the third position, but it doesn't mean you are not an intelligent person, because circumstances may uh, might make you not to um, be, come out the best in class, but we've seen from uh, 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 realities and uh, people who later became um, role models or who later achieved immensely in the course of their life during their formative years, they weren't that good academically or even in what they were involved at then. So that is why I say uh, <clears throat> exams may not be the best uh, or the true test of knowledge so uh, that will be uh, that will form my second uh, the second aspect of my talk uh, in making efforts Igbos across all countries in the six uh, continents of the world from um, Africa our continent of origin uh, Europe North America, South America, Australia, Antarctica. We will have found any place you don't see an Igbo man, then you know that that place is not successful. Uh, there's nothing in that place. And uh, we must make use of what we have to get what we want. Uh, before I get to that, I want us to look at the issue of trust. We are a religious people. It is important. We are not just into religion because of uh, the fact that uh, people, some people just uh, follow, follow. Naturally, we pride ourselves as uh, um, coming out from the bedrock of uh, democracy, and uh, it's not a, it's not arrogance, but it's a cultural thing, uh, in the sense that uh, traditionally. Um, we want to air our views. We are very, we are very pushful about that. Uh, nothing can stop us. A typical Igbo man will always air his views. And a typical Igbo man uh, regards himself as a king in his own family. With his uh, family and children, wife, uh, he wants to be respected in his uh, house. He will work hard and uh, uh, stuff like that. So... Having said that, I want to first of all look at the issue of trust. Um, because uh, why do we keep uh, keep uh, getting confused about who we are, about the efficacy, the strength of our God in heaven? About uh, we ask God for many other things, even frivolities. But the most important thing that can 
form as a catalyst to our success, to uh, our greatness. For us and for generations to come, we are not uh, taking it serious. The last time I talked about how our enemies are encircling us and uh, there's no need to hide about it. Uh, the evidence are uh, uh, it's, the evidence are abound. We've seen that, but we have to make it why the sun shines. We have to. I got you, OG and hence I brought up this issue of trust. Uh, looking at uh, the Old Testament, the Bible, we look about uh, how the uh, children of Israel came out from the enslavement in Egypt, how God guarded them and uh, trusting in God because uh, it's just like you, uh, you're a father, you want your children to trust you, your spouse, your wife or a husband, you want your partner to trust you. And when you know you are trusted, you wouldn't want to, um, you wouldn't want to betray that trust. The same with our God, he wants us to trust him. Uh, in all we do, because we are his children. And we do understand that we are his children. But unfortunately, we are not given um, that trust. We are not really uh, asking him, Father, we trust you in this journey we want to make, in, uh, in this march to restore our freedom, to uh, liberate ourselves, to restore our pride, to uh, have a home, a place in which we shall dedicate to you. We are not asking him because uh, he wants us to trust him. With him, we can always get what we want. And if we look at the battles in uh, King David and Co had in the Bible, you will see that despite the fact that they fought, they had sword, the greatest military weapons. They trusted in God because one with God is on the majority. One with God is on the majority. And God has always loved his people. Most times his children suffer and when they don't trust him, when they don't put their trust in him, he will want to punish them. He will want to just leave them and they will be mauled by the enemy for them. And any time they have recourse to him. You see, victory will be sure and certain. So why don't we trust our God? We look at the way Moses brought the children of uh, Israel out of uh, Egypt and uh, put them on the edge of uh, the uh, promised land and uh, Joshua took up. Joshua never hesitated in, uh, in his trust for God, uh, to uh, his trust in God. Uh, I think we, we have this famous uh, quotation in which he says, as for me and my family, uh, we shall trust, we trust the Lord, uh, the, uh, our God, who do you trust? And uh, as a leader, that was the hallmark of uh, that covenant between the children of Israel and uh, and they went on to conquer that land. If all the all the tribes that posed trouble to the children of Israel, they were annihilated. Uh, God still used their enemies uh, to give them victory, and these things happen. Uh, when you trust in God, he will always uh, find a way. Sometimes you'll be confused on how this victory will be achieved. But one way or the other, you see. You see, many of us, it, do, it does happen in our life. Uh, in our own personal victories over our enemies, we we'll see that many a times we don't know how our victory will be achieved. But we still trust God that he's going to rescue us. He's going to rescue us from poverty. He's going to rescue our uh, families. He's going to save our children or our parents from sickness. He's going to sort us out in our workplace. He's going to 
do glorious things in our life. So why can't we trust him on this uh, march for our freedom? On this march uh, for something that is important, not only for us, but for generations to come. After Moses led the uh, Israelites out of uh, Egypt and to the age of the promised land, like I said, <clears throat> the land of the Canaanites, he was directed, you know, by, by God to lead them to capture the cities. And the most important aspect of Joshua's character was to trust in God. One of those cities was Jericho. They had spies dispatched to these cities by Joshua, who was the leader. They prepared militarily. They had, a, but they trusted in God, taking instructions from Him. They relied so much in their God because this is one thing about the children of God. They take pride in their God, even at the. Uh, 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 point of annihilation they still have that is it not faith why do we really uh, every denomination talk about faith faith my people will say uh, yes you have to uh, have faith while doing the necessary things not just uh, uh, have faith without uh, preparation because as god should should he will always uh, show you the easiest way even when you don't he, you won't rely on your personal wisdom because he's going to guide you just like he guided joshua from moses and the city of jericho fell even they used the people of uh, the same city to conquer that same city. You remember about uh, the woman called Ra uh, Rahab also uh, that uh, helped to hide, hide the spies. And there were uh, tribes that usually were enemies to the children of God. The Hittites, the Amorites, uh, uh, Perizzites, or Perizzites, yeah. Uh, the Hivites, Jebusites, and the Canaanites, they were all exterminated under one command because Joshua trusted in God and the children of God trusted in God, taking his command. They destroyed that land and it was given unto them. This is what we must uh, begin uh, to understand. And from there, he still go to uh, David. The David, we read many of his Psalms today. He trusted in God. Despite everything, despite his full, uh, fallibility as a man, uh, his sins, he still loved God. Uh, if you go to uh, uh, the New Testament, they will talk about the prodigal son. We are children of God. Nobody is a saint. It is out of his grace. But the most important thing, that we must trust in him in everything we do, especially on this march. This march, the restoration of Biafra, is very, very important for us. It is important. Anybody that says it's not important, then you know the person... Uh, doesn't want our progress. We've seen what is happening uh, in the Republic of Nigeria. We've seen that there is no mequatarism in that place. We've uh, had, uh, we've done everything. We are uh, in all parts of the country doing our best to build the country. But the country doesn't want to move on. Those we are involved in in, in the country doesn't want the progress of the of the place they are unpatriotic bringing the place down while we keep building they keep bringing the place down they cannot initiate action for prosperity 
mm, they use poverty and the penury as a system of administration and that is it is anti god's children because god's children are always involved in, in prosperity god doesn't want uh, his children to, to suffer unless you are not following his path everything belongs to god including uh, all these nonsense gods that people are worshipping. Have you forgotten even, yes, they say money comes uh, from the sea. But what did Jesus Christ do uh, when he was asked to pay uh, tax or so? He asked one of his disciples to go and get a fish in the river and open the fish that you get a coin. And they use that to pay. To tell you that uh, the authority is in heaven and our God owns the authority. He, the authority is in, him, in his hands. And we must explore that. You can't, a baby can't just uh, have breasts that it should, uh, she should suckle and be sucking bumps. It doesn't happen. We must learn how to trust God. It is important. While we are preparing, we must... I'm not saying, I don't believe in going to examination and I'll be fasting and fasting without reading. No. While we read, we pray to God to sharpen our memory, to remember what uh, uh, we read. So this is why we must trust in God. And like Joshua said, he as for him and his family, that he trusts in God. He has decided that they serve God. What about you? This is why I used to like this uh, uh, Patiobasi song. I'll, I'll look for you. Maybe I'll remind you. Some of you who are Igbo will know this song. Let me search for it. I'll play maybe one minute. Yeah, thank you for listening to that. Uh, it's important for us to know who we serve because what or part of our problem is that we don't understand who we are or we often forget our powers, our strengths because the enemy is afraid of us. That is why they are using every method to confuse us. Along the line, Odika, it's like when you are going for an errand, you are uh, pursuing a goal. Along the line, that goal is something that's going to distinguish you, uh, make you... That process can equally mar you because if you are distracted uh, along the road... And you see today, many of us are distracted. We are distracted uh, by frivolities. We are distracted by things that we shouldn't even allow to distract us. And that is why we must uh, be as ruthless in our faithfulness as the enemy is ruthless to bring us down. And uh, I've talked about uh, uh, Joshua, and uh, it's the, I mean, the, the example is abound with David. We've seen that. What about uh, Elijah, the prophet, and the Baal? We saw what he did. God loves this kind of challenge. When we trust in him, because he knows we are his children. Why I, I bring this about? Because in your own heart of heart, you know that we are the children of God. Why do we pride ourselves as the children of God? Because we know who we are. Some other people, they don't have uh, that knack. They will always say, why are you people behaving like this every time you think... Is out of jealous because we have confidence in ourselves. 
we believe that we are special children of God, but we have to trust in our God for him to be able to do these things for us. Because if we don't trust him, how will he rescue us? He wants us to trust him. Um, our march is something very easy. He has done bigger things. He owns the earth. Whatever he wants, he does. But along centuries, uh, many of us and our ancestors have strayed the path, bringing in nonsense, carved things, uh, thinking that it's uh, it's their God. We've seen some of us are even bragging uh, about that. But uh, the story of uh, Elijah reminds us the strength of our God. That even when the occasion came to uh, make a contest against the prophets of Baal, what happened? The Bible uh, in First Kings chapter 18, I think, uh, talked about it. How the, uh, the Baal prophet gathered, he told them to call and call and call and call or maybe your uh, Baal is in, he went to the market or he has a visitor or this and that, making mockery of them. Because he has confidence of the God himself. And we do have confidence in our God. Many of us, personally, we have covenant with uh, our God. He does special things in our life, protect us from our enemies, protect us from people who try to bring us down, even those who want to kill us. I remember this uh, song, and I, uh, I don't know who sang that song. Oh, as in, uh, boy, it's, it's, this, it was sung, uh, it was uh, sung in uh, my local language, Igbo. As in, uh, boy, chine, kama, elo, we, fo, polamo, Many of you know, know that song. God protects us. Does many things for us individually, in our workplace, in our schools, among those who try to undermine us. Then, we must begin to re-enact that stage, that confidence that Elijah had in which he used to defeat the prophets of Baal. It is very important because we do know who we are and we know that the efficacy of our God in heaven, that he is strong, but he just wants us to trust him. With trust, then we prepare. While we trust in him, we make preparations. I said, uh, Ibus, Biafrans, particularly Ibus, are found in every country that is prosperous in this world. So why don't we make use of what we have to get what we want. We have the population, we have the skills. Many of us are involved in marriages that can bring favor to us. Many of us are involved in marriages that can bring favor to us. We have the cash too, but we are not making use of these things. It is important if you uh, if you know more about uh, the march of the today's state of Israel uh, to achieving their independence in 1948. You will know uh, what they passed through before getting their independence in 1948. The Second World War provided an opportunity for them uh, because. Like, like we are this day, that we are in, uh, all, they were all across uh, major countries, major states there. And even many of them have their allied forces to fight uh, 
to conquer Germany, uh, Japan, and Co. They fought with the Allied forces to restore uh, stability, a global peace. And it offered them that opportunity. Many of them in diaspora now aligned with those at home. And they moved in to mop up uh, Jerusalem, which was at that time uh, a trustee state under the, uh, under the uh, administration of the British Empire. And that was how, before you know it, they, got, they, they declared the state of uh, Israel. And the enemies surrounded them, fought them immediately. The whole Arab states uh, ganged up against them. And there were several wars. Many of you who, if you study history or government or even politics, you, you understand what I'm talking about. Even, even during the first, uh, during the uh, war between Biafra and Nigeria in 1967, Israel was, was in war at that time. They were still fighting. The Arabs fought them. So, and that is why they've been strong, they wouldn't look back. As many of us will always uh, criticize them. Why do they, they took over? Why are they involved in human right, right violations and things like that? But if they are not vigilant, they will be annihilated. These things are what we, we must learn uh, the lessons of history. And that is why we must be uh, vigilant, we must be prepared, we must use what we have to get what we want. And what do we have, if I should say? I talked about the scales, I talked about population, I talked about uh, some of us involved in marriages, I talked about uh, the financial strength of our people. What are we making? Uh, are we making use of these factors to get what we want? We have many of our people in the United States of America. We have many Biafrans, particularly Igbos in Canada. We have them in the United Kingdom. We have them in uh, Belgium. We have them in uh, Ireland. We have them all cut across. All nations on earth that can make tangible decisions, and this is why we uh, are happy with what is what the IPOB is doing. But many who are sitting on the fence must come out. We must come out. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. There's no need keeping quiet. They are taking over our land. Uh, the Fulanese are bringing in their kids and kin from other West African countries. They want to take Nigeria uh, as their country. Look at what, if, what happened in Central African Republic. They were, it's, a, it's a smaller country though, but they were resisted there. They want to try that in Nigeria. And unfortunately, the administration of Buhari is giving them that leeway the administration of Buhari is giving them that opportunity. They have connived with some of us. They've divided uh, the Yorubas. We now see that Yorubas, not that the Yorubas wouldn't want their own independence, but the, the Yorubas are now divided. We have the uh, Yorubas who are Muslim, we have those who are Christians. Those who are Muslims are empowered. They are, they are empowered than their kids and kids who are Christians. And that's, you see, you see somebody like Tinubu, Tinubu is a Muslim, in as much as they may not be regarded as full uh, Muslim because the uh, uh, Fulanis are always arrogant, uh, stupidly arrogant. And they think they are the, uh, the uh, owners or the real Muslims in West Africa. They've always thought about that. But their remote interest is to seize Nigeria and gather their kit and kid all across. That was what they did in the corner and took over Hausala. Look at today. 
Houses are their slave forever and ever, unless a Republic of Biafra is going to liberate the houses. But before the liberation, what do you see? Major house families, you have traces of Fulani blood. Those they raped, they give. You know, they, I don't want to start saying all the ills they've been doing there. And they are pushing. Even though they conquered only the houses, they've been claiming territory, using the state of Nigeria to spread their influence through uh, in, inflicting agony, rape, killing, murder, pillage on the rest of the tribes. See, they've, they've uh, reached... Look at what is happening in Delta. They are now spreading violence across the country. Recently, there, there, there was a report by the United Nations that um, a terrorist attack is going to uh, be waged simultaneously across the Nigerian states. Who doesn't know that all this... all these tr dangote trucks ferrying... Uh, fight men of fighting age are uh, the terrorist attack that we are going to. Don't be surprised if we start hearing blasts or shootings in Oka, Owere, and uh, Soka. Already we've seen what is happening in Ebony. They've, uh, they have uh, strong ground in Ebony. And some of our some of these governors, uh, out of their selfishness, just to be in power, are selling our land. They are giving our land for free. Look at this Fulani. They will just come into our forest and just build settlements without even buying the land, without even coming to the city to live with the people. They just establish settlements in our forests where they will just plan and lay attacks and seize the place. So we must... Use what we have to get what we want. Our people in the United States, election is coming. Who are your senators there? Who are your uh, representatives there? Who is gunning for the presidency? You should make these things as part of your demands to vote for these politicians. We must use what we have to get what we want. The same across every state. Because we have our people that are import, in important positions. We can't, this place is not our home. We can, yes, you can. we can have it as uh, our second, but it's not our home. In as much as we have our children here, yeah, yes. But tomorrow, these children, they're going to even face issues that their identity is going to be questioned. No doubt about that. Let us not pretend uh, about that. It's not about, if you like, have the uh, European passport or American passport. There are things, there are doors that when it comes to knocking, will be knocked cautiously and they'll be asking you questions. But this is a land in which we love our people. We love our kids and kids, wherever they were born. So we must begin to look at how to get support, to get influence over what we are looking. Your local representative, you must be sound, writing letters, getting them informed, changing the narrative. We must change the narrative because they've said a lot of things about us. We've not been in power. We don't control the government money. They are the ones who send ambassadors. They are the ones who send government uh, emissaries. They are the ones who um, make a state visit. They are the ones who talk on behalf of, look at, on behalf of the government. And you know one thing about, you might be so intelligent a person, but if you don't have certificate, when you are uh, uh, talking about qualifications, Nobody will listen to you. So the state have that influence, you know, to talk to their counterparts in other countries. So we must 
begin to exert pressure on our countries of abode, officials of uh, the countries we find ourselves. It is important. Politics. Look at the way uh, uh, things are happening in Nigeria. Many countries are not happy with developments in Nigeria. The Nigerian government exports terrorism. Look at Boko Haram. Boko Haram is sponsored by the states. It's a big business in Nigeria. Who doesn't know about that? Imagine Nigeria that uh, fought in, in Sierra Leone and uh, Liberia cannot finish Boko Haram because elements in Buhari's government and in the north before this government have been using that Boko Haram to siphon funds. But look at, it didn't ch take Chad. What did, just one day Chad uh, crossed into the Nigerian border and killed more than 1,000 Boko Haram soldiers. Since then, you've been, have you been seeing any trouble if not the propaganda that is being dished out by the Nigerian, uh, uh, by the media that is sympathetic to the Nigerian government, talking about a uh, Nigerian army killing 26 or uh, 46 uh, Boko Haram fighters, this and that, trying to uh, issue a face saving statement because. These journalists and these newspapers are on the payroll of the government. We must understand, we must use these things to our, our advantage. Wherever you are, are you in the United States of America? Are you in, uh, in Great Britain? Are you in Ireland? Are you in New Zealand? Are you in Australia? Are you in uh, uh, Belgium? Any country you find yourself, you must begin to accept pressure on local politicians, on policy makers, telling them why we need Biafra. Because the Nigerian state and the Fulani that have been in charge of the government has been exporting terrorism. Have you forgotten the Underwear Bomber that is uh, currently languishing in in, in the U, uh, United States jail, the guy who uh, hid explosives in his pants. He's a full on guy. And many of them, like that, United States recently put up a bounty on Chicago. We must talk about this. Terrorism, they've been, dis they've been disturbing the global security. Boko Haram, ever since Chad met uh, annihilated more than a thousand Boko Haram militants, what have they done since then? What about the issue of uh, immigration? Most of the Africans that emigrate out of the continent into uh, Europe are Nigerians. Some of them may take other nationalities, but they're Nigerians. Even Africans, until recently, Africans don't, uh, many, many Africans in different countries don't travel. Those who use their passports are Nigerians. You think that Western countries, doesn't, uh, authorities don't know? They do, they do know all these things. But these things will stop the moment we have a Republic of Biafra. Because this immigration have brought consequent troubles in Western societies. We must remind them about this. What about the crime? These immigrations have its attendant crime too. Drug issues and many other crimes.
a restoration of the Republic of Biafra will bring peace and security in that sub-region. And these are the people who are ready to trade. These are the people who are ready to, they are welcoming. They welcome everyone as long as you are law-abiding and peaceful and you are in, in support of the cause of humanity. Not butchering people, beheading them, chopping off uh, a pregnant woman's belly, killing a day-old kid without remorse. Invading people's land. This is what you must talk to your local politicians, non-governmental organizations, and policy makers in your country of abode, where you reside. It is important. Are you in North, Amer uh, North American country, any North American country, South American, Europe, Australia, even in African countries? We have our people all over the world. Those who are not in IPO, there are many who are not in IPOB, but they can do wonderful things. Some people have often referred IPOB as a, a one kind uh, organization. No. Don't do that. Where, where you think you can do better, you can do it on your individual basis. If you want to join IPOB, fine. But if you don't want to join IPOB, I mean, IPOB is not the only organization uh, championing for the restoration of Biafra. But they are in the leadership at the moment. They've done wonderfully well. They are doing great things and need to be supported. But you can put in your own personal support because you know you have the capacity. You know you you have a good job. You're a, you're a skilled person. You are a policy maker. You have the ears of those at the helm of affairs across countries in the world. Why not do something instead of instead of sitting on the fence? This full of mayhem and trouble and echoes of war, we must stop it by alerting global policymakers. In the pretense of Islamic expansionism, they are trying to bring in their people from all across West Africa. But it is important that we wake up to these realities. It is important. That is why we must remember our God. Why we prepare? We must prepare. Nobody is going to do it for us. The international community is not going to do anything for you. Have you forgotten the Rwa uh, Rwandan genocide? They are not going to do anything for you. They even plans to bring down the population of Africa. So we must defend our land. We must defend our land. We must make preparations. We must make preparations in whatever way. The UK retail uh, company, Tesco, says... Every little helps. Every little helps. Whatever you can do. You must not be a member of uh, IPOB or uh, any other organization to add in your own effort. Your little effort helps. I mean, we can raise, the, we can raise money to fund any struggle we want to. But first of all, we must be conscious of who, who we are. We must be conscious of the trouble we are facing, the risk of not speaking out, of not acting. We don't want to regret anything. We don't want to. We are not fools. We are not houses. 
who just give their land to the Fulanese and they are perpetual servants up to this day. It will never happen. We must show that we have able-bodied men. We, we, it's not about coming to the social media and we are following frivolities, things that shouldn't be primary issues. It's now the primary issues. Some of us who say they pray, they can't use that um, uh, opportunity or gift to mobilize our people to talk to our God. And that's why I said we must trust in God while preparing, like David prepared, like Elijah prepared. Like the children of God prepared, like Moses prepared, like Joshua prepared. We must prepare. We must prepare by having recourse to God. Because if we understand our capacity, then the confidence will build. Because we can do many things. It's just that. Our confidence has gone down. And this is why you must begin to contribute your quota. No matter how small it is, like Tesco will say very little helps. Through funding, through speaking out, through writing, through politics, through making sure yeah, that you are local politician, wherever you find yourself, if it is in the diaspora, is aware of the situation we are in. They must get the bigger picture and the clearer picture. If not the social media, what would we have done? This is to tell you what we lost during the Civil War. When we say millions, we are killed. You now see. Nobody reported about these things. These people are monsters. They try to take us off. That was why I, I sang that song. I usually, I usually dance when I listen to that. Uh, is this Uncle group? I love that song. I you know, if we, if our fathers and our mothers and aunties and uncles and grandfathers begin to relate what happened during the civil war then you will know that we are at risk the enemy ha is coming back again they want us uprooted they want us uprooted from our land and our generation must resist it by any means necessary because if we don't do that, nobody is going to do it for us. Who is going to do it for us? They've imposed leaders on us. People that we don't want. They are now our elites. Even some of us that we grew up together, that we talked about how to liberate our people, are now, they've now straight the path. By mere plates of porridge, spoons of gifts, they are now ready to betray us. They are now ready to even sell our land. Because of our problems, the enemy is using every front in order to suppress and annihilate us and take over our land. And exterminate us. This is not a, we're not just a, a raising a fake cry. These things, the evidence, you and I do know that. 
We need heroes. Now is the time to be a hero. So the little you can do, don't hesitate to do that. Use your God-given knowledge. Use your wealth. Use your skills. Use your courage to work for the survival of our people. But don't forget who we are. Don't forget who we are. And that is why I always believe that in this struggle, we must not feign the cognizance of God's strength, remembering his importance, that in great battles like this, while we are preparing, we must take directions from him. And that is praying about what we are involved in. This is important. The wall of Jericho fell down. The wall of Jericho fell down. When children of God are praising the Lord, the walls of Jericho fell down there. The walls of Jericho fell down. The walls of Jericho fell down. When children of God are praising the Lord, the walls of Jericho fell down. We must understand who we are. It is important because many of us, we now, we're now beginning to boast with helpless and powerless objects. Let us really search deep in our hearts and know who we are. Some of the wood, wooden carved things we are talking about, they are powerless. They've never done anything for us. They are helpless in the face of our adversity. And that is why I've always said, we must begin to trust our God. We cannot achieve this view because this is not only a physical or economic uh, fight. It is equally a spiritual battle. We've seen what we are involved in. Some of our brothers and sisters, our Kitok and Kin, are even denying their identity. Do you think? Somebody who is Igbo will now tell you he is not. Somebody who knows that the enemy is dead on the backyard, want to take over the land. Your brother and your sister, who knows you, is even engaging you in a very big, murderous fight when the enemy is just across the fence. On the path to our freedom, on the path to our liberation, we see assassins on the road. They are trying to waylay us. This battle is not just, uh, it's not about reading it or keeping quiet. So this is why we, our generation, it is our turn to do something. So I don't know, how old are we? If we don't do it, if we don't rescue our people, then your children will wake up, they will grow up and still talk the way we are talking. The enemy will shut them up. So we want to finish this. While we have the strength. It is important. This battle is not for us. It's for generations to come. We want to have a, a place we will call our own. In which we will have the freedom to praise our God to fulfill our God-given potential. Brothers and sisters, my people see now, we must begin to use what we have 
to get what we want. I said it before, we have the population, we have the skills, we have the cash. Some of us are involved in, in marriages. Use your influence to exert pressure, to, to achieve results for us. We will be grateful. We are looking for heroes. We have millions of people. Yet, we can't get what we want. I think that is my message. On trust. Trust. Trusting in God while making efforts to liberate ourselves. It is important. We must trust in God while making efforts to liberate ourselves. We must use what we have to get what we want. It is important. Today, in this liberation gospel, thank you for listening to me. My name is Okachuku Okori, your brother. Have a lovely weekend. Thank <laughs> you.